Hello guys, what is up? It is me, Prince of What Ifs. I want to get onto this video fast, so all I want to say is, the next What If will be What If Asta was a conduit, and after that, What If Goku had the Renegon. Let's get right into it. So, um, last time we left off, it was the race, and Ace actually made it in first place, with Luffy coming in at second place, and Sabo at third, Hashira comes in fourth, and Bakugo and Todoroki tie up at five. And due to this, Ace gets the 10 million points, and of course everyone have their eyes on him, but they don't really mind teaming up with him, because they actually um, want to team up, him, team up with him because he's strong. But they expect the trio to team up as usual, because they are the like three, they always usually do things together, but to their surprise, they fist bump and then go their separate way, so they try to join their team as fast as possible, but then they get disappointed again when Luffy and Sabo already found their own team. And then something weird happens with Ace starting to walk towards midnight and he asks if he can fight everyone by himself. And accidentally this actually speaks into the mic and everyone hears this and they're just thinking oh, he's either being delusional or arrogant. Midnight while confused still allows it because there's nothing in the rules that prevent it and everyone soon gets in their position with um, Inko who is in the stands with like some guards who are part of her family saying that kid must be stupid if he thinks he can beat anyone by himself, let, him know, let alone our precious Hashira. And as soon as Midnight allows everyone to um, start, everyone just rushes at Ace and aims for his headband. And this is when Ace sweats with a little bit of a huge grin on his face as he releases Conqueror's Hockey, making everyone just pass out. And actually reaching some people in the stands and knocking them out. And everyone in the stands, including Aizawa and President Mike, are just shocked. And President Mike asks if Aizawa can elaborate on this, and he just says, I, I didn't know, he's never shown this type of ability. I guess he must have more than one quirk. And I don't know what it is. As soon as the crowd hears this, they start shouting Ace's name, and he's just pumping his arm, like, yeah, that kid is freaking strong. I'm happy that didn't reach me, though. And some of them are trying to actually wake up their family members. He's like, they're worried. And Ace tells them, they'll be fine. It's just that I can't control this ability yet. And now, um, since they don't know what to do because everyone was knocked out, the conclusion was found that the people who were knocked out last would fight together. But then they realized, oh, that's unfair because not many kids would get to show off their stuff. So they come up with this. They spin the roulette again and actually end up on battle royale so everyone will be fighting it's an all-out fight and everyone can just show off their abilities it'll be awesome and soon um people wake up and the kids are actually really mad at ace and staring at him with anger with luffy and um sabo scolding him saying um you probably shouldn't have done that what's wrong with you uh now everyone's mad at you including us you know we can't use conqueror as good as you and Ace um, says, sorry, I wanted to try something. At least we get to go all out. Luffy then says, that is true, but don't you dare use that move again. And Ace uh, uh, promises, and everyone steps in the huge stage as Midnight says, go. And everyone starts beating each other up and showing off their skills, with uh, Momo showing her incredible adapting and how she can create things to her advantage. Tokoyami using Dark Shadow to just beat up people. Um, Todoroki's like effortless wins using his ice but not using his fire which is weird and Bakugo's like aggressiveness and even people like Mineta who are actually holding out and you know everyone is just getting their stuff and the heroes are actually pretty you know impressed soon um, of course everyone who is weak gets dismantled and the only ones left in the ring are the main people which are Ace, Luffy, Sabo, Ashura, Bakugo and Todoroki and Bakugo sets his eyes on Ace and aims at him with the full power of his explosion. 
And Ace Aldo's uh, little surprise does counter with his fire, just brushing it to the side and grabs Bakugo by the neck. Then he says, why the hell are you so obsessed with me? I don't even know who you are. Bakugo then says, I, I have to find out who you are. Your face pisses me off, you, you nerd. This tone and this voice and how he said this, this reminded me um, Ace of someone he never ever liked. And that was Katsuki Bakugo. And Ace then says, so it's you, huh? This is why I never liked you. Um, obviously Bakugo was like a little confused, like, what do you, what do you mean? What are you talking about? He then bring, uh, brings Bakugo close up to him and says, It's been a while, hasn't it? Kachan. And this is when Bakugo just realizes, Oh, it's you, Deck! But then he gets flown out the ring with um, Deku burning his neck a little bit while pushing him and enhanced with hockey. And he gets hit into a wall as it cracks. And yeah, he's out and he's actually passed out. Ace then rushes at Sabo, punches him in the stomach, but Sabo does manage to turn his torso into metal, which stopped it, but to his surprise, Ace then switches um, attacks and kicks him in the head so hard with armament, sending him out of the ring as well, and Sabo lands outside and is, as he thinks, did Ace get stronger again? God damn it. Well, good luck, Luffy. And at this moment, Luffy and Hashiro and Bakugo prepare an attack. And before they can do anything, um, like Bakugo, Deku does this kind of thing where he just explodes the fire off of him and it just creates a big kind of like smoke to go everywhere and he takes advantage of this. And he aims at Todoroki with a punch. Todoroki does notice this and creates like a huge ice wall um, to stop it, but it cracks it by coating his arm in hockey and crushing like, he just crushes Todoroki's ribs a little bit and sends him out the arena and just, people see Todoroki pop out of the smoke and they're just like, who, who, I wonder who's winning. Maybe it's that ace kid. The smoke then slowly starts to dissipate at, as people can actually see more clearly and this is when uh, only Ace and Luffy and Hashira are in and the crowd is like shocked at, it seemed that Ace actually did throw Todoroki out. Someone with such a huge like power and are just cheering. However, Endeavor and Inko aren't exactly happy at all. So out of anger, Inko stands up yelling, Hashira, you can't afford to lose to such trash. And Ace's observation hockey activates as he just looks at her dead like in the freaking eye and sees the woman who was supposed to care for him. The woman he was supposed to call mom. And he gets really pissed. Ace then says, Luffy, give me a second. I'll get to you. Luffy understands what's going on and just lets, lets it go because he knows he's going to get his fight. And one-on-ones are even better. And he um, he then rushes out to Hashira. Ace rushes out to Hashira and punches him in the stomach, which makes him cough up a bit of blood. And he grabs him by the neck. And the crowd looks on in horror because that's not what a hero is exactly supposed to do. And um, then Ace looks at Inko saying, So this is my little bro, huh? Inko, I guess you couldn't do better than me. Even that bastard Hashira can realize that, yeah, this just ain't it. But I guess you never knew I was actually pretty strong, did you? Everyone is confused with President Mike asking what he, what he's tech, like just talking about. What the hell is he on about? And Inko says, yeah, release Hashira. And how do you know my name? He says, well, 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 that's harsh. How could you forget your first and oldest son? Her eyes widen in fear as she starts mumbling and sweating like how Deck usually would have. And the guards trying to comfort her and they realize like what this is about. This is the kid they threw out who became so powerful. And there is a chance that he might just take revenge on all of them. And people start realizing what's going on and speculate that he's probably part of the Midoriya family. It's like start saying... Oh, that's awesome. He's part of the Midoriya family. So this kind of creates a domino effect with people just talking about it. And Ace interrupts and uh, tells them, Shut up. The Midoriya family is filled with scum. That woman threw me in the forest to die when I was four years old. If it wasn't for the fact that I wanted to be a hero, I would have killed their entire family without a second thought. He then looks at Hashira, who is scared shitless, and he smirks. 
and forms a fire fist and punches him in the face, sending him into a, the exact same crack that Bakugo made and cracking the wall even more, so much that the the stand actually starts to break up a little bit. And this is this looks painful. Like they look disfigured. The two are lying on each other and Bakugo and Hashiro just look disfigured and it's so hard to look at this. And then the crowd then looks at Inko with uh, just disgust because right now in this moment, to them, she is not a hero. She's just a horrible person. She chose as someone who came from a hero family to disown a child just because he apparently was weak or something. And they don't even know why she actually did it. I don't know why I'm asking. Nobody knows that. They don't know why she did it, which makes it even worse because why would you just throw a kid out of your house? and throw them away, and to her, I mean to them, everyone, they're scum, the Midoriya family to them now are scum, and they start like mocking them and throwing things at them, so they had to leave the stands, um, and we cut back to Ace who looks at Luffy, like a little sad, because he expects that, oh, Luffy's gonna be scared of him because of what he did, and Ace says, you must be really scared of me right now, you went Sabo, Luffy smiles saying, what are you talking about? If I was you, I would have. I would not have hesitated. I would have just annihilated them. Unfortunately, I don't have your calm nature, so they'd be lucky. I mean, so they're lucky. What am I on about? Sabo outside the ring and says, "Yeah, your family isn't exactly the best. Even before this, people didn't like them. They're really annoying and arrogant. They think they're always above people. I think everybody is actually happy you did that, no matter how terrifying it may have been." And Luffy says, yeah, so stop being so down. It's not like you. It's weird. So if you really care that much, then you should give me a proper fight. Aston says, well, like a little bit of tear dropping now saying, you guys are the best, you know that? And they say, yep, we know. Uh, Luffy and Ace do fight with obviously Ace winning, but today they didn't feel like they lost at all. It was a great day because they found out a little bit more about Ace and... Maybe Ace finally found some justice for his, you know, troubled past, so they're not that sad. So Ace is crowned the winner of the sports festival, and Luffy and Ace, and uh, Luffy and Sabo, are, again, aren't sad. So, um, yeah. And then they go back to uh, the changing room, and this is when Ida gets a call about his brother being attacked by the hero, uh, hero killer, Stain. But he tries to keep like kind of a farce and be positive, but then soon goes to, like visit him after it's done, and um, this is when he sets his plan to attack Stain. So the trio arrive back home and they go to sleep. And I'm gonna say like in a few hours, um, while he was asleep, Ace actually lit the floor on fire, and uh, eventually like he smells it, and then he like has to put it out like just stepping and stepping like stop 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 stop, and then he finds out oh I didn't do that so yeah. He goes outside to uh, see if like something's wrong because right now he doesn't even feel like he can be inside the house. He might burn something else. And yes, this is his powers awakening. So soon he does figure out that what he can do now is just control fire better. But he can also control, how do I say? He can control exactly where the fire is directed and he can turn other things into fire. And they won't burn anything if he doesn't want them to. So not only does he have better control, but now anything he wishes to have fire on it or fire to go there, it will have fire or just turn into it. You can like literally just, and then they will have fire. And he doesn't know it yet until like the next morning, but he can actually control other fire sources now. Yeah. And um, soon he actually like barely slept because he kept like training with it, like having fun. And when he wakes up in the morning, he is tired with, like, uh, bags under his eyes. And he goes to have breakfast. And then he mentioned that his powers grew stronger. And Garp says, huh, did you have an awakening? I guess you could say that. He, Ace doesn't know what an um, awakening is. So Garp explains what it is since he already told Ace about what devil fruits were. And Ace is actually pretty amazed that... Things like this can happen, and then he demonstrates his evolution by snapping his fingers as he turns a normal broom into a clone of fire. Yes, I am doing this, and if you have other suggestions, you can put them down. And of course, it's not that perfect because it just looks like a silhouette of Ace, but with no legs like a ghost, and it's in fire form. And Garp is very impressed and suggests that Ace tries controlling other sources of fire. And when Ace tries controlling like fire from the stove, 
he controls it perfectly, which is more awesome because it's blue fire and it's the strongest type of flame. And Luffy wants, um, Luffy and uh, Sabo are like, they think it's pretty awesome. And they're about to go to school when Garp informs them that uh, they've been investigating the Midoriya family and they've done this to a lot of other kids. They found a lot of things in their house, in their history, in their documents about how they used to throw kids out or kill people. And yes, most of them were kids. And Ace says, I'm not even surprised at this point. I can't believe their blood runs through my veins. They leave then and go to school where they get to choose their hero names. And of course, Hashira isn't there because the investigation is going on. So there's some family problems. Um, I'm going to say that Ace picks the name Fire Fist, but later in the public, he's going to be named something else that I'm going to come up with as I'm writing the story. And you guys can suggest other names you want, but for Luffy, I'm going to say he picks Stretch and Sabo says me either Metallico or Magneto. You guys can pick whichever one. That was a horrible name. <laughs> and everyone picks the same names, names as the original and without Bakugou actually finding a name because all he keeps talking about is murder. So, um, yeah. And um, Aizawa then talks about their work studies and Ace got the most heroes asking for his... Um, well, him being there, and he, everybody's like, oh, that's so cool. And, of course, he chooses Endeavor, but he doesn't know what Endeavor actually acts like. But regardless, he would have to, because they both have fire powers. And well, um, soon, we're, we're going to cut to we're gonna cut to when he gets there. And when he arrives, he sees Todoroki being yelled at by Endeavor. And Endeavor, noticing that Ace arrived, stopped and greeted him. And Ace says hi to Todoroki, and is a little suspicious of what was going on. After this, Endeavor shows him like the training room and stuff, which is obviously fireproof, and where he'll be sleeping, and all of that. Endeavor then also takes him outside because he wants to see what his abilities are, and since Ace didn't really have that many special attacks yet, he tries copying some of Endeavor's move and the ones that he's seen while on the battlefield, and he pulls them off almost perfectly, and of course he shows his, his only special move right now, which is like combustion. And Endeavor is impressed because he did all, all his moves almost perfectly and he's shocked. And Endeavor says, so is that all your abilities? And Ace says, well, actually, I have two more left that I discovered last night. And Endeavor says, so what is it? Ace says, attack me and I'll show you. Attack me and I'll show you. Sorry, I don't know if you heard that, but my voice just messed up a little bit. And Endeavor sees this and he um, he assumes that Ace is mocking him and is being arrogant. So he flies off into the air and using a prominence burn and launching at him. And Todoroki, Todoroki calls him out on this, obviously saying he's a psycho, only for both of them to see Ace smile as he controls the fire and like just turns it around and throws it back at Endeavor, who has to counter it and falls back down. Todoroki saying, you can control fire that isn't your own? Are you sure you're not? You said you're quirkless. Are you lying to us? Aston says, being quirkless doesn't mean I'm weak. And besides, we live in a world of superpowers. I don't know why it's so weird that I get one that isn't a quirk. And Endeavor then says, then, can you teach me how to do that? Aston says, no, it's not possible for you. Just bluntly. And Endeavor again takes this to his feels and feels like he's being told he's weak or something and says, I am the number three hero. How dare you, you brat. Now teach me how to do that. I order you. Easton uses Conqueror's Hockey on Endeavor who falls down. And when he looks up, all he sees is a monster. And Easton says, don't you ever talk to me like that. I am not your son. I'm saying it's impossible because it's literally not part of your power set. You can't do it. And bragging about being number three hero won't make me help you or make you stronger. Him and Toroki then leave with Endeavor looking down like in shame. And Endeavor after he's just like done with his little episode. We cut to Ace and Todoroki. And Todoroki is telling Ace about everything that Endeavor has done to destroy their family bonds. And Ace now detests Endeavor. Completely hates him. And from now on, Endeavor would try to redeem himself, I guess you could say, by sparring Ace and trying to prove that he is not 
inferior. And every time, Ace would beat his ass. And Ace took this time to actually teach him a lesson about humility and to just beat him up because of what he did as a horrible father. And Todoroki also got stronger and he's um, he's under Ace's wing and Ace told him, oh, if you want to get stronger, you have to use your fire. It's your power, not your, uh, not your dad's. And so like that, the training just passes like nothing with Ace learning some new super moves and I'm going to name them. First one is Finger Pistol. He shoots lasers from his fingertips by compressing his fire and it shoots out like lasers. Second one, Fire Lord's Domain. Any fire in a one mile radius becomes under his control and he can use it however he wants to his will. And third one, Crimson Blitz. Creating a bunch of clones from fire, he gives them orders and they gang up on an op opponent and beat, like just beat the living shit out of them. And obviously people can't attack them back because they're fire, uh, they're fire so the attacks go right through them. And the fourth one is Red Hawk. Um, it's a, obviously I took this from Luffy. It's just a fire punch enhanced by uh, armament hockey to the highest level, which by now, yes, he has learned that. And it is pretty strong, strong enough to penetrate steel. Fifth one is Fire Bunker. It's a dome of fire that doesn't burn those inside it, and it just protects them. It's, it's a shield. And uh, the sixth one, I believe, I think that's what I'm on, Fire Fist. A huge direct wave of fire in the shape of a fist aimed at an opponent. Pretty self-explanatory. Obviously combustion and overdrive. He pushes his flames to the highest temperature, turning it into blue flames, which he has learned he can do now, which is increase uh, his flames um, temperature. But he can only do it for 20 minutes. Regardless, it still hurts after it's done and his body could pass out potentially if he goes too far. Um, he also gets armament to the highest level, which is like, it has that reddish color. Observation to about medium level. Now he can keep it on at almost all the time. And Conqueror's also medium level because now he can direct it more, but he can also accidentally still hit people, but now he can control it at will. Um, so we're gonna skip to them patrolling the streets and when that's when they see an explosion from far away and they speak to it. They see Nomu's destroying everything and before Endeavor can react, Ace rushes in in front of a couple about to be, to be destroyed and using Finger Pistol to destroy the Nomu's brain and killing it. The other heroes such as Gran Torino see this and start copying what he did. And Gran Torino, after beating up one Nomu, then says, Nice job, kid. You're Garp's sidekick, right? Huh. No wonder he talks so much about you. Aston says, That old man? Huh. Well, um, I should probably get rid of these flames or something. And Gran Torino is just confused, like, What do you mean, get rid of them? And then all of a sudden, all the heroes, including Gran Torino, and excluding, um, well, uh, Todoroki and Endeavor, because they've already seen this, get shocked when all of a sudden, the fires start to form into humanoid form and start beating up Nomu's and helping out the heroes. And they are obviously just shocked out of their minds with Gran Torino thinking, is is this kid really quirkless like he said? He he could be stronger than Endeavor. Easton says, guys, don't worry. They're made by my power. Feel free to ask them for help. And as he's doing this, some people are actually recording and he notices this and he also tips his hat while smiling at them and they start cheering. By the way, his costume is exactly like what you see on screen. It's like aces but with like more equipment on the sides and the buckles and everything. And he smiles at the crowd and they start cheering like some of the girls start blushing. You, you know, you know, he, he's getting that. Soon, most of the Nomu are defeated and this is when Ace's observation Aki picks up some bloodlust and he heads into an alleyway only to see Ida about to get stabbed by Stain. And anger, he uses conquerors, making Stain back away in fear. And he doesn't know why, he just did it. And he's so confused, and he sees Ace coming to help Ida. And Ace, uh, seeing if he's okay, and Ida says, Yeah, I'm, I'm fine, I just can't move. Obviously, Ida asks why he's here, and Ace tells him to stop being so stupid, because they're friends, man. I gotta help you out. And... Ida obviously is still like a bit um, prideful and doesn't exactly take it to heart, but he appreciates Ace for doing this. Ace then looks at Stain saying, why did you do this? You already hurt his brother, just leave him alone. 
Stan laughs a little bit psychotically saying, why? Because he's a fake. Just like all the heroes now. Money, fame, constant praise to feed their egos. That's all they want. And since they don't realize and just change, I'll just have to purge all of them, including you. He runs at Ace who starts using a finger pistol at a fast rate, which does fast rate, which does hit Stain a lot, and he's bleeding, but he pushes through it to slash at Ace who blocks it with hockey covering his arm. And they go into a fight. And considering how super strong Ace is naturally, he is dominating and ends up breaking one of Stain's swords, and he backs away shocked at how strong this kid is. And this is when he gets hit in the stomach by eyes popping from the ground and stumbling a bit and uh, spilling a bit of blood. And Ace looks behind and sees Todoroki and says, thanks. And then he blitzes Stain using Red Hawk and copying Luffy's special attack from the anime and just barrages him with punches. And you can just hear the bones crack and you can barely see his fist moving. He is just destroying him. And Stain is just thinking, this kid is so powerful. Why is he so strong? And why can't I cut him? And soon the heroes come to see him pummeling Stain are just left in shock. And they just stand there amazed and don't really want to move. They're just enjoying the show. And pretty soon Ace stops with Stain just dropping all bloody. And Ace deactivates hockey and then he ties him up with some equipment he had because he's always ready and picks him up. He turns around to see everyone staring at him and just kind of nervous saying, um, hi, then he just gets bombarded with cheers, just yelling his name, ace, 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 all of that, all of it, everybody's just cheering, Ew, especially like, they're, they're pro heroes and they're cheering, which is a pretty big deal. And he's, he's a little surprised, but he's happy. Um, he then sees the police and is going to deliver stain. The police then says, wait a minute. Using your quirk is illegal without permission. Ace then shows his psychic license and says that he got permission from Endeavor. The police asked Endeavor if this was true, and this is when Endeavor pulls a devilish smile and was about to lie and take all the credit. This is when a girl comes up to Ace for an autograph and asks um, if she can also uh, ask what his special move was and all of that. And at this point, Endeavor can't do anything because it's already revealed that well, Ace did all the work, and there are people around, and he notices that people are actually recorded now. So he just says, yeah, he got my permission. Just, yeah, just let him have it. He's pretty disappointed, and Ace notices what he was about to do and actually laughs a bit inside, saying, <laughs> you thought you could take me down that easily? Not a chance. We cut to when the studies are over, and as Ace is heading home, people are asking for pictures, and just like for his autograph and he's impressed at how famous he has gotten because it was just a little fight to him he never really found it that interesting to begin with and at this point people have been spreading the video of him creating and controlling fire like a like just like a boss and they started to call him fire lord and heat wave because he just controlled the he just controlled the moment you know he was he was in the moment he was controlling everything and he looks like sort of like a fire lord and heat wave because well he's controlling the fire everywhere it is so um and it's intense so yeah that was a horrible explanation but you get the point but um ace wasn't exactly aware of these names yet so he never really found them that annoying if he did he actually would have not liked them because he chose to stick with fire fist but he'll see maybe he might change it he's considering it we're gonna skip to when the students are in class and they're asking him, did you really beat Stain? Ace then says, yeah, but honestly, it wasn't that big a deal. It wasn't that hard. Coming over then says, maybe for you, that's a big deal, man. And Ace then says, yeah, you're right. That's actually pretty awesome. And more and more uh, questions just keep coming to Ace and he's trying to answer them all. And soon All Might comes in telling them that they will be doing a race to see how good everyone has gotten. They go outside to a field and the following racing are Luffy, Sero, Mina, Tokoyami, and they're, they're outside. And due to how strong the students are, the distance has been way longer because All Might trusts that they will like blast off 
in like a moment and finish it fast if he was limiting it a little bit. So he made it a little bigger and he's just watching to see what Ace will do. Most people are betting on Luffy and Sero because of course their quirks are suited for this element and it's perfect. Soon the race starts with Ace barely like matching Sarah and Luffy, but he's doing it on purpose. And Luffy then says, hey, I learned this yesterday. Ace, check this out. Luffy stops for a moment landing and he gets in a certain stance. And then he yells, Gear Secundo. People see the steam coming off of him as his rubber just bounces up and down and pumps. And currently he has figured out how to enter his second gear which is a very powerful transformation, I guess you could say. It's an alteration to his body, and just like in the One Piece universe, this will make Luffy way faster. And so he just blasts off, getting like um, ahead of everybody, and appears in front of them, taking the lead, and everyone is shocked at how ridiculous he, like, fast he is, because they actually can't see him anymore. When he moves, he literally disappears from their sight. But Luffy figures that if he got strong, then Ace definitely got stronger as well, and says, Ace, beat this as you can. And Ace says, oh, just watch me. People watch on uh, the monitor, uh, people who watch from the monitors are shocked when they see Ace's flames turn blue as he just passes Luffy in a flash. Well, not that they could see him pass Luffy, but like he just appeared at the finish line super fast, actually burning a bit of All Might's hair. And he apologizes, obviously. And everyone is just confused. They don't know what to say because they never thought that he could increase his temperature to that degree and he actually went so fast that the pressure of the heat knocked back Sero a bit which made him slightly well late but he still ended up in third place behind Luffy. And of course he's disappointed. Mina comes in last and and um, Tokoyami comes in fourth. Um, we cut to Bakugo who's watching this and some of the people are saying, he can use blue flames now? And Bakugo says, damn Deku, every time he just keeps beating me and I'm just left behind. Every time I let up, even once he wins. After the race, everyone then goes to congratulate him and ask him, what was that? This time you can't leave, you have to tell us. But before he can answer anything, Nezu steps in saying, Ace, we need to talk. And that's where I'm going to leave it off. If you guys like this video, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe so we can get closer to reaching 2K. That is our new goal, obviously. And if you have anything you want to say, put it down in the comments and about things that should change or things you really liked about this. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys in the next video. Be safe. Don't do stupid crap. And I don't know about you guys, but soon school is about to start for me, so I might not get to post as much, so I apologize in advance. And for those of you who actually made it here, well, now you know. And those of you who didn't watch it the whole video through, well, now you won't know why I'm not posting as much. Anyway, until next time.